Good evening, everybody. It's Mike, KD2KOG, part of the technical support staff here with SDRplay.com. I had to redo this video three times in the past 45 minutes because I've been having technical issues. Hopefully, this one is going to be the one. Okay, what I have for you guys in this video is setting up CSV user list browser. Now, I've done this video twice already. I've done it for the SDR Play official YouTube channel, and I've done it for signalsacrosstheponds.com, and I'm not too sure if any of my viewers from those channels or that website have been to this channel and it you know the subscriber numbers are going up which i'm so appreciative of and i don't know if you guys know about this app it's a free third-party app that allows you to cross-reference the frequency that sdr uno is tuned to if you're in hf because it's really just basically shortwave list and it will show you the possible stations that it could be with a map from your qth to the transmitter location so if you really are into shortwave as much as i am this is a must-have app it's it i don't even use frequency guides anymore i'm not going to mention any books or or list that i use because i don't i'm not here to throw dirt on uh at at anybody or anything it's just a really good app that it's it's convenient i don't i don't need to dig into other websites when i can have it right there in front of me and it's going to show me exactly what station is transmitting so Enough of me talking about that. Let's just get right to it. So launch uh, your browser and you're going to need to set up a virtual serial COM port pair. I will put a link in the description of how to set that up. My colleague Steve already has a video on the official SDR Play YouTube channel of, of how to set that up. There's two options. There's the free one, COM zero COM, and then there's a paid for app, virtual serial port emulator. I use the paid for one. And whichever one you pick, just set up a pair, one and two, three and four, five and six, just keep them as, you know, consecutive. So I'm going to assume you have that part set up. If you don't, pause this video, open up another tab, click the link in the description to the virtual serial ports, set that up, and then unpause this video. Okay, we'll figure, we'll assume you have that set up. Go into Google, CSV user list browser. Click on the first link that appears go to download go to beta and download the beta zip i already have it sitting in a folder here on your c drive you can put it in your program files or your x86 just make a folder called ham that's what i do and make a subfolder called csv user double click the beta zip select the files drag and drop them into there double click csv user list browser it's going to ask you if you want to run it. You're going to want to run it, and you're going to select SDR Uno, SDR Play, which is right here. Let me just zoom in a bit. And select SDR Uno, SDR Play. That's all you need to select right there. So let's close that out. That's selected. Click OK. You're going to have another application within your folder with the title SDR Uno in front of it. Right-click that and click send to desktop. So let's do that again. Right click, send to, and select your desktop. Now we have a shortcut. Close that folder out. We don't need to touch it anymore. Oh boy. All right, double click SDR Uno, that uh, shortcut that we just created. We don't need to always ask for permission to open this and click run. First thing you're gonna wanna do straight out of the gate is select miles. If you're not using miles in your region, leave this alone. So distances in miles, go to web, download converter and select ASD for all of these options. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's zoom in there. So this way you can see exactly what I clicked. So I'm giving it permission to auto download the list here. Let's get that out of your way for EIBI for the HFCC. I'm telling it that it's okay to do a conversion here and I'm telling it to batch download all the lists when we select that and to close this dialog box when it's done downloading. All right, let's get out of zoom and we wanna select save details and then click close. Next option is we're gonna to go to skin and we're gonna to go to color scheme. I personally like G313. You can select whatever scheme you like, try them all. Pause the video, pick the scheme you like and then unpause the video. So I'll pick 313. That part's done. Now, we wanna to go to tools, 
we want to go to QTH Manager. This is very important because this app is going to show you a map of your QTH to the transmitter location. So you want to get this part as accurately done as possible, if that makes sense. So we're going to work with main QTH, take out the, the longitude, the latitude, the locator, and the QTH name. Go on Google, type in grid square locator, and find out what your grid square location is. Mine is EL96VP, let me verify, EL96VP, and the name I'm going to give it is Mike KD2KOG. Save details, close. Now go back to web, download your list, and everything that we checked off previously, whoops, we didn't do that one. It's going to automatically download and it should automatically close this dialog once it's done. So let this run and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, it's just about done. Okay, should be finished. Let's click close. Uh, click yes. Let's just do it again just in case. I want to make sure that this dialog auto closes like I said it would on the bottom when we selected it. Perfect. Now go back to tools, go back to QTH manager. Your grid square is there. Click on recalculate a user file. I'm going to use the EIBI list. So just for the purposes of this video, I would suggest you do the same thing. So go to four main QTH, click that, click the EIBI list here, and it's going to auto generate a name. Click save. That's fine. Click save details again and click close. Close out CSV user list browser. Relaunch it. Go back to distance and bearing and select your name here. That's what we did earlier in the, in the grid location. Select Mike KD2. I'm just doing that for, I'm selecting mine. So Mike KD2KOG, that part's done. Go to file, go to import and import the EIBI database. You have two options here, the CSV or the text. I usually select the text. The list is now loaded. Now go to auto load and select auto load list one. So this way the app knows to load up the EIBI database when you launch this application. That's done. One more step and we're just about done. Go to options, go to settings, go to com ports. Now remember I said you're creating a com port pair, two com, two com ports, one and two, three and four, five and six, anything, as long as they're consecutive and you remember them. Select com port two because we're going to assign com port one to SDR Uno. Apply the com port settings and let's make sure a test connection that failed update we might have to relaunch CSV again. So let's make sure two is enabled, update, apply, close. I might have to run this as admin. If you have this issue here, uh, what you can do is right click the, the shortcut here and go to compatibility and select launches at run this app as admin, just in case. Let me launch it again. Let me go to options, settings, com, and let's see if this takes. Now let's see if we run it as admin. I had this issue before and that's why I had to redo this video, but let's just see if it's something on my end. Run as admin, options, settings, com ports, test the connection, huh. Update the list, apply. Let's see what happens when we put it on one. I really don't know why it's doing that. Let's launch SDR Uno. Let's just see real fast. I'm really sorry about that, but like I said, I do these videos uh, in one take. 
there's no script. We could have issues. It could be as smooth as silk. This one looks like we're having a few hiccups. So let's see if we can fix it because you guys might have a hiccup also. Okay, let's go into the RX control panel. Let's go to settings. Let's go to cat. Com one is enabled because we're using a pair that is on one. Let's enable. Let's actually make sure that the VSPE is running. Yeah, that's running okay. Okay, so that's connected. That's okay. Well, let's go here. Okay, it's an issue on my end with VSPE. Okay, so we were at COM ports. So let's, uh, let's rewind a little bit. We're going to go to Options, Settings. Go to COM. You're going to select one of the two pairs that, uh, one of the two COM ports that you have. So VS, sorry, CSV user list browser is going to use COM2. We can click Close. SDR Uno is going to use COM1. So let's show that that's there that's connected let's close out csv let's close out sdr uno and let's relaunch both okay now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to options settings and we want to auto open tool when the app is launched and what you want to select is world map this is phenomenal click close close it again and let's launch it and there's our map. And there's my QTH. See that green dot? So we're going to right click. Let's make this a hair bigger. This really shines on a dual monitor setup, by the way. But for the purpose of this video, I can't video capture two monitors. I can only video capture one. So let's do it that way. You want to show the clocks. You want to show AM and PM. This is also another issue that I've been having. Let's go back to world map. Okay, there we go. We're back to normal. And you want to center the map on the QTH. It's this way. It's right there. You want to show long path. And you want to show short path. So here's the short path. Here's the long path. And let's just make that a little bit smaller. Okay, that's good. Let's launch STR Uno. And we're going to track the tuned frequency within CSV user list browser. It's completely set up and it's ready to go. My apologies for the issues earlier. Let's move that over just a hair. Just give SEO a moment to launch. Okay. She's all ready to go. Let's make that a little bit small. And I have to fix this. This is where you guys can see it. And let's make that a hair smaller. Okay, that should be good enough. Now, if you if you look here, I'm on 9420. I'm going to tell it to track. I'm going to tell it now to show the current broadcast now, the current time, your local time. So we're going to select that. Let's make sure our lists are loaded. Auto load is EIBI. Let's make sure we have the correct file imported which we do. And as I click, you'll see that this is going to change and it's going to show you what it possibly could be. So let's click play and let's go live. I have to lower that volume and let's click on this station here. Now you guys know I'm dealing with a lot of noise. They still haven't fixed it yet. So I'm going to click that station and it's telling me it could be Radio Marte or it could be this other station. So we can click it. Let's click on another carrier. Here's another one here. I have no idea what it is, but CSV userless browser is going to tell me what it is. It's Brother Stair. Let's click on this one here. Uh, WWCR. Let's go a little bit higher up the band. Let's see what this is. Possible Radio Marte or uh, BSKSA. And let's tune up and down. Also the same. Make sure our media wave notch filter is enabled. Let's see what this one is. And it's giving me the distance here. So that's uh, Dr. Jean Scott. And she's transmitting. It looks like the transmitter's out of Cuba. If you really want to dive into this app, you can right-click the station. And you can tell it to show you the frequency in Google Maps. So let's do that. Show transmitter location in Google Maps. 
and it's saying that the transmitter is somewhere around here in Cuba, which is a really cool feature. Let's go further down the band. Let's go, let's go here. All right, here's some stations. Now that's AM. You can actually load a uh, medium wave. It's not AM, it's medium wave. You can load up medium wave lists and it will tell you what it could be. There's really not too much going on tonight. Let's see, did I do these already? Uh, did I do these already? Okay, that is, yeah, that's kind of far. All right, that wraps up this video. Like I said three times already, apologies for the uh, hiccups that we had earlier, but this app is phenomenal. It's going to track whatever you're tuned to, whatever the current tune frequency is in SDR Uno, it's going to tell you exactly what it is. As I move up and down the band, it's right then and there. And if you want, you can create a new bank in SDR Uno if, if you want to use my broadcast list. Uh, put it on the bottom and hit insert. It give you a blank spot right there. And as you go up and down, store it in the list that I already created. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to say 73s and I'll see you guys in the next video. Again, this app is phenomenal. It's free. Download it, install it and enjoy it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.